Welcome to Lab Electronics. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can convert a Precision S10 PA amp into a cool guitar amp. Well, here we have the Precision Model S10 PA amplifier. You have a microphone input, an auxiliary input, and a tone control. Tube lineup is the 6EU7, and that is your preamp and inverter to drive the pair of EL84s. Rectifier tube is the 6V4. This amplifier in its present state is worthless to try to use as a guitar amp. There's just no gain. So I'm going to convert this amp into a guitar amp for a customer. All right, I showed this conversion about four years ago, but we have another amp and I've made some changes to the documentation. So I'll show you what's required to change this S10 into a guitar amp. First thing, you have to have a preamp tube. Okay, so what I do is I remove the 6EU7 and just envision that that is now a 12AX7. Then this socket becomes the inverter, which in this case would be a 6AB6. So now instead of a 4-tube amp, it would be a 5-tube. Then, on our controls, our mic input will be your volume. Then we'll have treble and bass. And then around back, they had an old microphone type input. We're going to change that to a quarter inch input jack. Of course, the filter cap and other components of the amp are bad from age, so I'll be rebuilding that too. Should be a fun project. All right, here is the bottom side of the S10 amplifier. As I stated before, this slot is going to become our inverter, and we need to make some room over here for another tube socket, which is the 12AX7. So, since I have recreated the documentation for this amplifier, I'm really not concerned about what's there now. So I'm going to get in here with the wire cutters and remove everything in my path, drill a hole, and get that tube socket mounted. Here's an update on our S10. I've added an additional hole so that we can have an inverter tube. So I shifted the original 6EU socket to position 1. Now we're going to have a 12AX7, 6AB6, driving that pair of EL34s. Let me show you underneath. All right, bottom side here is the new added 7-pin socket for the 6AV6 tube. Unique thing about this socket is it has the same diameter as the 9-pin. I found these at Nebraska Surplus Sales. I bought them quite a few years ago and they're very handy for this type of application. Now yes, I could have left this as a 9-pin socket and used half of the 12AX7 for the inverter, but I think that would have been pretty expensive compared to the price of a little 6AV6. Alright, before we start the wiring, I'm going to get this old filter cap removed and replaced. Get all this wiring out of the way, and we're also going to replace this old mic jack with a quarter inch style for a guitar. Alright, here's a little progress report. I have the new filter cap and quarter inch input jack installed and I've completed some wiring underneath. Let me show you that. Alright, bottom side I've got the main filter cap wired. This little 22 microfarad cap feeds the preamp through the 22K resistor. I've set a terminal board for the coupling caps that go to the grids of the EL84s. Modification of the Precision S10 to guitar amp is complete. New tube lineup. We have a 12AX7 preamp, 6AV6 inverter driving a pair of 6BQ5s, still using the original 6V4 rectifier. The control pots have been replaced, and there's quite the story behind that. New control lineup is this is our volume, treble, bass. Let's take a look around the back. I added a speaker jack and the jumper for selection of impedance is still operational. That old microphone input jack has been replaced with a quarter inch type to plug your guitar in with. Alright, let's take a look underneath. Right, here's the bottom side of the Precision S10 after modification. This is the 12AX7 socket that I added. The resistor values and tone circuit configuration 
is pretty much identical to that of a Fender Princeton. This is my inverter tube. And since this socket had the center post, I was able to do all the resistor wiring right on the base of the tube socket itself, reducing noise. I added a couple terminal boards to mount external components. And of course, we had to install those new pots. I'm going to cut to the story about those pots and show you what I went through, and then we'll do a sound demonstration of this amp. After modification of the amplifier, I need to change the value of the three pots. So we need to have this as volume, treble, and bass. But the value of those pots is not correct according to my schematic. So I need to replace the pots themselves and put these knobs back on. And as you can see, these are really cool looking knobs. But here's the issue, guys. If you turn this all the way, you see the little set screws. Okay. Well, unfortunately, those set screws have seized. And I thought, oh, well, that's not a problem. Put a little oil in there and let them sit. It made no difference. And then I inspected the knobs closer. If I pull back on the skirt, you can't see it, but I can. There's actually an aluminum bushing inside of these plastic knobs. So these set screws go down into the aluminum bushing which locks it to the shaft of the pot and that is where it's seized. So I can't even get heat in there to try to you know, free things up. It just won't do it. I thought, well, what the heck am I going to do? Now in the past, when I've had this situation, I've actually had to cut or drill set screws and hopefully retract it and then try to get a set screw to go back in. In this case, I'd really like to save these knobs but it looks like it's going to be a destructive disassembly. I have an idea. Let me show you. Alright, so here's the idea. I know that these knobs are not going to come off easily and I'll probably destroy them attempting to pull them off. But the pots themselves are not going to be reused. I have new pots to install. I just need to get these knobs out of the way so that I can change out the pot. So looking at the back of this potentiometer, if I pull the knob, you'll see that pin going in and out on the back of the pot. I thought, well, hey, if I remove these covers, there's probably a clip or some type of a crimping action that they used to hold that shaft through and into the back of the pot. So what I'm going to do is remove this cover and see if that's the case. And I'll cut that, pull these out from the front, remove the pot, and then see if I can gain access to that bushing surface I was telling you about and get these knobs off. Okay, we're going to start, which is going to be the volume pot. So to remove this cover, there's four little tabs here that are folded over. I can only get to the top two because I can't pull the pot out to remove it. So I'm going to carefully undo these tabs and see if this back cover will come off. Alright, there's the first one. I was actually able to turn the pot. I got my screwdriver in under the cover and pried it up, popped it right off, and guess what? There it is. So I can remove these pots pretty easily. On the next one, I'll actually show you this operation. Alright, so the next pot, I can take my pliers and I can turn it enough. We'll get my screwdriver in there. There it goes. This one came apart. In more pieces than the other one. Come on. Of course, when you want to put it on camera, it's going to be more stubborn. Of course. Hold on, I'm just going to grab it with these. I don't want to damage that tube socket behind it. There it goes. Now she goes. Done. Alright, well there's what's left of the pots. Now I can gain access to the nuts, retract the rest of the housing, and put in my new pots. Next task will be to try to remove these shafts and reuse those classic knobs. 
All right, there's the three new pots installed. Next task is see if I can retract these shafts. I'm gonna use a heat gun, a little oil, set screws right there. See if I can get those out so I can reuse the knobs. All right, what I'm doing is using a little bit of this gun oil. Put it on the shaft. Come in here with my Weller heat gun. Heat her up. And she'll come right out. Success. Look at there, guys. Little heat, little oil. Set screw came right out. No damage. Well, there they are. Knobs are back in place. It's time to wire up the pots. Now, right, here's a test of the Precision S10 now as a guitar amp. I'm using a looper for the input. Remember, we have volume, treble, bass. Here we go. Here's treble. This is a Fender Princeton tone circuit. Sounds pretty good. So you can do the same thing if you find one of these little Precision S10s, modify it, you've got a great guitar amp. If you'd like more information on how to perform this modification yourself, take a look at my Patreon page, DLab Electronics. I have detailed pictures and a schematic available.